Welcome back, everybody. It is uh, 418. Joining me now is uh, Senator Dan Sullivan. And, Senator, how are you? Hey, Mike. I'm great. I'm back home. I just got in uh, late last night, and so uh, it's gorgeous day here, but uh, doing good. Great to be back on the show. Well, always glad to have you. Now, we saw an article today from Bloomberg that talked about the Willow Project, and um, there's some speculation that that was uh, leaked in a last-ditch effort to kill the project. Have you heard anything about where this is and what the Biden administration might do? No, I, my my assessment is similar to yours. We're, we're tracking this like hourly. You know, um, we were supposed to hear by the end of the week, and uh, I, I believe that Bloomberg article is exactly how you describe it. I think uh, maybe they're getting ready to approve a three-pad uh, project, which is exactly what we've been pushing for, and um, that Bloomberg article. I think quite likely is just what you described, which is um, one or many of the anti-Willow factions in the Biden White House leaked it. If you read the article, it had all the, you know, oh, my God, this is going to be a climate disaster, mm -hmm. all the stuff that's not true, but leaked it to get the environmental groups and senators who are anti-Willow to uh, call the president and try to get them to stop what we hope will be a positive decision. But no, I've not heard from any administration officials today, and but we're tracking it minute by minute. Mm -hmm. Now, this week you made a, a major speech before this big energy conference, and uh, you also were on the same program as John Podesta. And John Podesta uh, is uh, kind of an influential person in climate, uh, I guess, language and, and, and lore with, uh, with the president. Did, did you get a chance to talk to him? And, uh, oh, yeah. Kind of tell I've, me, I've, yeah. I've, ta I've talked to him a lot. You know, and, and, you know, more importantly, Mike, we finally, I had a request in for over a year to meet with the president on this project. And, you you may have heard we finally got a meeting with him last week, the congressional delegation. And at the beginning of that meeting, you know, I handed him two things. I handed him the unanimous resolution from the Alaska legislature, uh, all of the senators and all the state reps, every party, 100% um, unanimous, gave to the president, the same as president. There's, you know, some discussion that Alaskans aren't for this? Well, here, we're for this. We are for it. Here's a unanimous resolution. And then I gave him, I said, you, you need to understand the context of this decision. And I handed him a map that my, my office put together called the Last Frontier Lockup. And I said, you know, your administration has issued 45 executive orders and executive actions targeting Alaska shutting us down in every sector of the economy, oil and gas, critical minerals, mining, hunting, fishing, timber. And, um, you know, I said, uh, Mr. President, these are driven by lower 48 environmental groups to shut down Alaska. This project, Willow, is so important. We need a ceasefire here on what you guys are doing locking up our state and uh so i presented him this map and, and details every one of these actions and then you know we we made the case and look mike as you know because I've, I've talked about it a lot on the show there are so many reasons this is a no-brainer the first one you may have seen there was a great wall street journal editorial last week that was titled the willow test for biden and as you know, it, it starts by saying President Biden says the only barrier to more U.S. oil production is recalcitrant drillers and oil companies. Okay, Mr. <laughs> President, then are you going to approve Alaska's Willow Project? And, you know, being down at the what's called Sarah Week in Houston, this is this really big 
uh, energy conference, probably 8,000 people, probably the biggest energy conference in the world, and Podesta was there. It was, Mike, this was the talk of the conference where people were going to guys like Podesta, even companies that aren't Conoco, saying Mm -hmm. this Willow project in Alaska is so important. If you can't drill um, in the National Petroleum Reserve of Alaska on a project that has the highest environmental standards in the world, lowest greenhouse gas emissions in the world, supported by the vast majority of the Alaska Native people, supported by working men and women across the country and the building trades uh, who've done a great job advocating for this, and and will strengthen our national security, you know, um, what would you – I mean, what project are you ever going to approve, right? So this was a hot – this was the topic of the day, the topic of the week down at Houston. And and finally, you know, on the national security point, I did – I raised all these issues with the president. But the one I said – you know, I said, Mr. President, here's the one there's never – we never hear an answer on. Your administration has lifted sanctions on Venezuela. Mm -hmm. We're getting 100,000 barrels a day. From Venezuela, they're a terrorist regime. They have horrible human rights records. They have horrible labor records. They are one of the most polluting places in the world to produce oil with greenhouse gas emissions 20 times with an X higher than you would have on the Willow Project. How can you do something like that, encouraging oil production that's happening today, 100,000 barrels a day, and not let Alaskans with our highest standard and highest standards on the environment and our own workers, let alone the revenues, if we get to keep the revenues, why are we giving Maduro, the Venezuelan terrorists, revenues from America when we buy their oil? So why wouldn't you let Alaska produce? You know, I've asked that question, Mike, uh, uh, dozens and dozens of times of Biden administration officials, and they just look at you. No, they don't want. They don't want to answer it, uh, Senator. The other problem, uh, it, what Biden does with executive orders, I mean, really, he needs to get reined in. He's not the king, and and he has put what did you say, forty five orders 45. to shut down the city. That's 45. insane. And and I even said to him, I said, you know, I've gone to my Democratic colleagues in the Senate and said, look, if you guys came to me. If there was a Republican administration in, in the White House and they targeted your tiny little state with 45 executive orders and executive actions, and you came to me and said, hey, Dan, can you help me out here? Holy cow, we're getting crushed. I would help them, right? Like 45. Of course. <laughs> That's just wrong. Now, to their credit, I did mention this White House. I've had 10 Democrat senators. They don't want to be named because the environmental, the radical envirals will come after 10 senators, Democrats, call the White House and say, geez, Louise, guys, can you lighten up on Alaska and can you approve the Willow Project? So we're even getting bipartisan support from the, you know, Democrat senators just because in part because we're being crushed so much by these guys. Yeah, I don't know. Does he? You know, you know what's it's what's interesting, Dan. And, and we got a, we got a short time left. What's interesting is that Ted Stevens took Joe Biden under his wing after after when Joe was a freshman and he lost his you know his wife and and uh, child in a terrible accident. And uh, Ted Stevens was the guy, uh, along with Ann Stevens, who took took care of this guy. Yeah. And. You would think well, that he would have a far yeah. better view of us. Well, Mike, it's interesting. Like I said, we didn't leave any argument, you know, untested, right, in this yeah. hour-long meeting with the with the president. And I raised that. I said, well, actually, we had the date that Ted Stevens brought Joe Biden up. They did like a 10-day mm-hmm. tour of Alaska. I, I talked about it. I talked about, you know. And uh, he, he, he talked a lot about Ted Stevens. You know, they're very close. He gave the eulogy. You might remember at the Ted right, Stevens I remember that. Uh, funeral and did a good job to his credit. Yes. And then, and you know, he was saying a lot of nice stuff about Ted Stevens, which was great. And they were friends, as you mentioned. 
but I did. I didn't want that moment to pass. I said, well, you know, Mr. President, uh, one final thing. We're talking about Ted Stevens. You know that if Ted Stevens were in this room right now, he'd be fighting like hell, like hell for Willow. And, um, you know, the final issue that came up, and I think it's a great argument, and I've been using it in front of the media and speeches, these lower 48 radical environmental groups come up here despite the fact that the native people, native leaders of Alaska are very strongly in favor of this project. Of course, you know, there's a few voices out there who are against it. You get that on anything. But the vast majority of the leadership, the big native groups like AFN and others, are all very strongly behind Willow. And then you have these lower 48 environmental groups coming up telling Alaska natives what's good for them, right? And Mm -hmm. the Alaska native leadership is starting to refer to this, these lower 48 condescending far left elites uh, as the second wave of colonialism as eco-colonialists. I love that phrase. They're lower 48 (laughs) condescending, arrogant. They're eco-colonialists for, for Alaska, for the native people. And, um, you know, that topic came up in the Oval Office, too. I gave my final wrap-up speech, two years of work in this, a floor speech, uh, two nights ago in the Senate. I was a little tired at the very end, and I slipped from calling them eco-colonialists to eco-terrorists. In the main, that was, <laughs> that was, that's, uh, that's accurate. I think well. I was just too tired. That was a slip of the tongue. So, But you get the point. I do. I do. Senator, it's always good to have you on. Uh, please stay in touch with us. If you hear any more, uh, you know that the, our door is always open. We love, have, we love talking to you. Great. Thanks, Mike. We're tracking this minute by minute. So important for our great state and our country, for goodness sakes. This should be a no-brainer, Absolutely. but with these guys, nothing's ever easy.